Good morning. I'm Eranga Pereira. I would like to present my findings and analysis on scenario planning for Toyota. I will touch base on current industry, key drivers and trends, key uncertainties, and the extreme considered for scenario planning. And finally, the four scenarios along with my reasoning for the most plausible one. This industry is a capital incentive industry that require high expenditure to maintain market position. The current 20.3 million US dollars market is expected to increase by 26.5% by the end of 2025. So what drives this industry? The most obvious, of course, it's technology. Economic stability. The chaos of pandemic is classic example to assess this. The government and other authorities that can implement regulations at both global and local. Consumer behavior. What do consumer really want? Are they ready to embrace advances like uh, autonomous driving? And finally, globalization. The merge is not between, not between automakers, but between automakers and tech giants resulting in major shift in business models and job markets. It's important to identify what specific factors have contributed to these key driving forces. First, shift from horsepower to computer power. If car makers don't absorb this digital transformation, they will be obsolete like VHS tapes. The market surely needs an Android versus iOS version for mobility. Secondly, autonomous vehicles. What segment will benefit from this technology and will it be worth investment? What sort of impact will this have on labor markets? Then fuel cell electric vehicles versus battery electric vehicles. This is a current battle, no doubt. With more capacity, fast charging and clean emission, fuel cell electric vehicles seems to be ahead. The IoT platforms that enables secure communication between vehicles as well as vehicles and infrastructure components. This will certainly transform the user experience. Feature on demand will improve and customization will be like never before. This will also influence new business models. The concept of innovating to zero. Currently, only 75 to 80 percent of the vehicles are recycled. How can technology be used to make it 100 percent? showroom to digitize retail would pe people really want to touch and feel or would they find it convenient to review and customize their vehicles online and have it ordered just like they pre-order their mobile phones the pandemic surely has made online shopping trendy and finally ownership to subscription based model would people want to own and maintain a car, pay insurance and road tax? What a fraction of an initial cost would the resale value be? And what is a life cycle like? Based on above, there are two clear uncertainties. Firstly, policy and regulatory influences. Higher the automation, higher the risk of getting hacked. Take, for instance, the data on travel route and destination that can get exposed and direct them, the vehicle, to unsafe destination. Every electronic item have a software need warranty to safeguard the consumer. Emerging business models and transaction type, along with the forcing labor market's impact, must be carefully regulated. On the other hand, 
policies around waste management and emission control will be strongly supported through a tax and other benefit structures. Second parameter, uncertainty is technology. It's important to bear in mind that the new trend towards technology is very cost affair. It is wise to consider if gaps in skill and knowledge would rise. Will consumer want autonomous vehicles? Would the cost of purchasing and maintaining it be? Will they have a resale value? Or will it reduce drastically, much like mobile devices? Outlined in this slide, the two uncertainties, technological advances and regulatory policy and framework, which create different scenarios. Let me briefly elaborate on four likely scenarios. Green, green grass is where your technology usage is high, but the regulatory that impact you much less than in comparison. Fast and the furious is where the highest technology used to operate the within very heavily uh, regulated environment. The fallen chance is where both the application of technology and regulatory is very low. And finally, slow and steady, where the technology is very low, but you still operate with high regulations. Let me start with bottom two scenarios where the application of technology is very low. Fallen chance. This, yet again, it's not two different terms of vehicle types and emission. They will be obsolete in heavily regulated environments simply because they are fail, failure to comply with environment regulations and heavily burden of taxes. Slow and steady represent that uh, conventional type of vehicles are driven on fuel and manually operated but if they chose to operate in less regulated jurisdictions for instance in the developing countries they can survive many people in these nations are not tech savvy and prefer car they can drive and afford their concern on environmental preservations uh, remaining low and therefore the regulatory policy framework will be fragile. Now we have clearly established that an approach with less technology, certainly not a way forward. And that brings us um, to our final contenders. Let's analyze this two bit further. This what uh, fits Toyota journey in the most. Fast and the furious. We are looking at ultimate product, driverless vehicles, fully automatic in and outer system and mechanisms, loaded with safety features, no emissions, and fully recyclable. Great pulling power and battery power, enough for 1,000 miles, wireless fast charging, on the go solar charging, good for Earth in many ways, and no doubt there will be many tax concession to boost their products. Public funding can be expedited in installing charging points to support green driving. On the flip side, however, the threat to the labor market with companies like Uber announcing the fully shifting autonomous vehicles arise caution on the government policies and regulations. Where will the responsible lie on event and accident? Regulatory much indeed ensure the consumer is fully warranted for each and every sensor of the software this vehicle operates on. Regulation on regarding data protection are indensible. And how will change the business model impact? Transaction that previously happened through the agent now happen directly with the end users. How the government will react of the field free exchange must be considered. Green green gas, our final setup. Green green gas are looking at an advanced hybrid model here. 
with well-developed battery powered over 1000 miles in the first fast charge and on the go solar charging technology but do we want it to be driverless certainly not we want to be a drive assist we do not want fully automated system that threaten the company's data security of the consumer we are looking at 100% recyclable vehicle with zero emission and most importantly we do not want to enter a market that looks very attractive right at the start but it's bound to face many regulatory boundaries in the long run let me draw your attention towards to toyota vision statement Toyota will lead the future mobility society enriching lives around the world with the safety is the most responsible way of moving people through our commitment to quality and ceaseless innovation and respect for the planet. We stay to exceed expectations and reward with a smile. So it was in 1983 that in intent was first launch and 37 years later only 59 percent of the world population is exposed to it in a few other surveys conduct worldwide it was revealed that although people paid extra to get cruise, cruise control in their vehicles they did not like to use it despite the fuel efficiency is the long drives but they didn't like it the vast majority want to drive with control these are the clear indication that regardless of the hype autonomous vehicle will not be suitable no the market leaders the cost of mechanism of these will cater only a niche market which then aligns the best for Toyota's vision. I conclude, green, green grass. Thank you for your time.